In the case of Gina Carano versus the Walt Disney Company, a lot of folks out there have a number of questions insofar as what a settlement might look like if Disney tries to pull that hat trick. The problem for the Walt Disney Company is, is that Gina Carano is more than likely not like anybody else they've had to deal with in court before. See, is Gina actually in this for the money? The survey says probably not. So what is that going to mean for the Walt Disney Company now that the case has been referred to mediation pre-trial before we actually potentially see some fireworks in the latter half of next year, starting in September of 2025? That's when the trial date is set to begin. Ron Coleman and I had a conversation on what that mediation would mean, but we also discussed what a potential settlement might look like or what Gina might be able to be enticed by from the Walt Disney Company. Let's get into that. I don't know if mediation is really going to solve this. I suspect it won't. I suspect that, uh, you know, short of Disney coming out, and and making a, a a grand mea culpa, at least insofar as a grand mea culpa for Disney. Disney is not the type we've talked about this for years. They do not come out and they they do not apologize for anything. They don't apologize for messing up Marvel. They don't apologize for messing up Star Wars. They don't apologize for anything they do. They just quietly change things in the dead of night, and you wake up and you realize, oh, something's different now. But I, I would think what Gina is looking for in this case is for Disney to admit, if they want to settle, admit they did something wrong to her, apologize for their behavior um, to her. And 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 I just don't see Disney doing it. So therefore, I'd, I'd be very skeptical at this point. My gut feeling, again, that's all it is. My gut feeling is, is that I don't think mediation is going to solve this issue. And to a lot of extent, I hope it doesn't. So um, <laughs> well, It's not, it's not good a, for us. It's going to be a hell of a lot more fun for this thing not to be mediated away. Uh, let, let me, me ask Ron this. real quick. Let me, real quick. Ron, uh, so if money's off the table, so if that's not uh, a motivator in this situation, which that's rare, but if it's not, uh, and Disney does not want to go into having so much be made public, uh, what's the strategy that Disney attorneys might go for in mediation? Like what, what's in the uh, toolkit if money is not the leading factor? What else have they got? That's a great question, and and, I'll, and part of the reason I, I really appreciate you asking it is that I was all I was I was just thinking. I alluded to before to just what could a really creative mediator do here to craft a settlement, and the fact is, Valiant and Pro, and Tom, of course, as usual, is doing whatever the hell he does during these streams. I've never really <laughs> oh sure he's, he's got a gif. Come on. Um, I'm not so sure it's impossible to come up with some sort of statement whereby Disney says, we really support free speech, but we also, and, and at the same time, we really, we really support our, you know, our, our, the, the values of our constituency here. It is, it appears that finding the right mix of where to draw the line, you know, like some kind of mealy mouth public relations. Uh, it, I'm, I don't think it's impossible to come up with something that is short of an apology or that is an apology without necessarily conceding anything of a policy level um, magnitude. And on the first, on the other side, um, you know, would you, it, is there any way that that would satisfy Gina? I I I don't know. I, I again, based on on how we've been speculating, I I have a feeling not. There's a set date for the trial. There's a set date for they want this mediation to be concluded. But that's not to say that Disney and Gina Carano's legal team couldn't agree to. Okay, we look. We have everything we need here. We have all the evidence we want to present. We know the cases we're going to make. We know the cases we're going to defend against, whatever the case is. And they say, look, we're, we're going to schedule a mediator in January and we're done. You know, and the mediator, it goes nowhere. Would the judge move the trial date up? 
or would they leave it set to September and we just hang around for another eight months? I don't know how that works. Or, or, no, or, no, I don't it, think that's I, I don't think that's what we're talking about here. I think I think what, what we're talking about here, again, is in all probability, paper discovery and probably not expert discovery mm -hmm. will take place. And then there is a mediation attempt. And if the mediation is unsuccessful, then we get into depositions and experts. There we go. That'll be fun times. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. With you, I'm with you. I mean, in terms of content, we're all concerned here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Because uh, this is the first time where I feel like somebody has, number one, you know, we think, as far as we know, a very good case here on their hands considering the, the the specialty nature of the California labor law. And number two, it's a, it's a, and this is what's key about this case, I think, in my opinion, even more so than the fact that we all hope and suspect that the evidence is probably on Gina's side. And that is the fact that Gina Carano is well known. I mean, you have other people out there that, that want to take action against a company like Disney, who likes to make things go away. And generally you never hear about it because they're, they're just Joe average people, right? In this case, Gina Carano is somebody that's well-known, well-liked, well-respected, well-followed. She's got some of the biggest lines, if not the biggest lines at every fan expo she does for autographs and pictures. So, I mean, that, that really makes a difference uh, in this case. The, the, We're the missing the bigger picture here, though, Valiant. She had a subscription to Disney+. Plus. Yeah. So she, she has she to go. She can't sue. <laughs> that's a great time. Very what a great Dave Chandler says, Ron, does the Gina Carano Disney suit have the potential to set up any serious precedent concerning corporate internal policy and the First Amendment? It has the potential. If it goes to trial and there's or, or if it goes to some form of final judgment, mm -hmm. it is possible that Disney could appeal on the ground that the Unruh Act is unconstitutional since they did defend on the on the basis of the first amendment they could say i mean they didn't make a motion to dismiss based on their first amendment rights they may say that the judge the judge should have either trumped should have said that the first amendment here trumps the unruh act or alternatively if they presumably they will have uh preserved their ability to argue this by the end that the Unruh Act itself, that if indeed it doesn't trump the Unruh Act, then, then the Unruh Act is unconstitutional. Gotcha. And, and that, that that law in California, that particular labor law that this case is, is built around, um, it's been on the books for quite a while. I mean, this is yeah, not see. a new law. I mean, this has been around for, what, probably 50 years-ish, uh, maybe longer. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it was. I think it's been around as long as I have. There you go. I think it's from the early 60s. Uh, Arrow Stone for 10 says with Musk backing Gina in her lawsuit, along with a possibly or along with possibly of or possibility, I guess, of his involvement in a stock hostile takeover. Would anyone try to claim a conflict of interests case? It's a cute question, Arrow. Yeah, uh, it is pretty remote. Uh, it would be very easy. I mean, it's, it's a very attenuated conflict, given the economic exposure of Disney to the Gina Carano lawsuit compared to the vastness. Let's, you know, even at the present market cap compared to, you know, market cap six months ago, mm -hmm. it is a it's a pimple. <laughs> you know, there's no real there's no meaningful conflict. there. It's a great it's a good question. It's, I don't mean to say I don't mean to to uh, trivialize it by saying it was cute, but it is cute. <laughs> no, and you know, the other side of things real quick before you go, Ron, I, mean, I get this question a lot about Elon and hostile takeover. Look, again, as Ron mentioned, even though the market cap is lower now than it was, you know, six months, a year, two years, three years ago. Yeah, granted that. But the issue is it's still a 160 to $170 billion some odd market cap company. To to to, to do a hostile takeover of a company of this scale, um, Elon's not going to do this himself. I don't. Elon didn't even buy Twitter entirely himself. He had other private equity, I think, partners that came in uh, with that deal. You'd have to have something 
even grander to do that with Disney, like by literally four times. Think about it. Twitter was about 40 billion. Disney right now is 160 to 170 billion, maybe even a shade higher since they've come back. I mean, America. maybe if like Elon and Peltz and Perlmutter all got together, maybe and a few other You, you still would have a hard time putting a dent in it. I, I don't I, I It would don't be a tough case, but let's just say for the sake argument for the for the super chat, if they were, mm -hmm. I think at that point I don't think I think it's null and void because Gina would probably get what she wanted and that would be back and get an apology from certain people or they would be gone themselves. I'm sure Elon would be yeah, like, yeah. what's that, Kathy? You don't want to apologize? Well, there's the door. Well, again, yeah, and that, that's just it. This is really pie in the sky stuff, and there's a difference between Elon maybe taking a position in Disney, even of a billion dollars or something like that, um, and becoming a, a larger individual shareholder and having a little bit more clout. That's a far cry from the hostile takeover situation. That's 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 like that's a whole different order of magnitude uh right there. Uh but anyways, Yeah, I, I don't I this is a lot of a lot of things would have to fall into place for this to to ever be an issue. Guys, Absolutely. it's been as Ron. usual an incredible uh, simulation of reality. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you for being here, Ron Coleman. Make sure you guys are checking out Ron Coleman on his YouTube channel in the Coleman yeah, please, Nation it's podcast. Fun. Come on. Yeah, come on, Good night, come everybody. on. Take care, Ron. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.